my face. I didn't want the surveillance cameras to catch any footage of me. Otherwise, my cover will be blown and my parents will know where I'm hiding. While I was waiting in line to pay, I looked at the TV that was behind the cashier and heard the reporter reporting about a missing girl. Me. She had shown my picture and asked people to cooperate if they knew any information that could help find me. I got nervous. I paid for what I bought and got out, making sure not to make any eye contact with anyone in the supermarket. I headed to the place where I was hiding, Mrs. Jenny's house, the old lady who lives next door. She's been away for a while, visiting her son who lives in another state, and I snuck into her place. It turned out to be the perfect hiding place. Neither of my parents nor the police thought of searching it. I got to the house and went through the kitchen's back door. I made sure not to turn any lights on so no one would notice that someone was living here. I slightly pulled the curtains and checked our house. Everything was normal, for now at least. Oh, you're asking why I'm doing this? It all started a month ago at my high school. Suddenly, being popular was about having expensive stuff. And by expensive, I mean really expensive. Things only my friend Tess could afford because her dad was a millionaire. She bought this designer bag that cost $20,000 and brought it to school. All the girls wanted to take a picture of it and all the boys wanted to flirt with Tess because they thought she would shower them with gifts. You know, since she's got the money. And it worked. Tess started dating James, the most popular boy at school. I was jealous. Actually, all the girls were jealous. So they started doing the same, buying expensive stuff and showing them off, hoping it'll catch a guy's attention, or any attention for that matter. But I couldn't do the same. My parents were far from being rich. They worked really hard and barely made it from month to month. I knew I couldn't do anything about it. Yet, one day, while we were in the sports class, Anna, an old enemy of mine, called me out. So Karen, how come we've never seen you bragging about something? Are you homeless? I was caught off guard by her nasty comment. I felt all the girls turn their heads to look at me. My face turned red. I wasn't sure if it was from anger or pure embarrassment, but I managed to say, I choose not to. I've got standards, you know. Anna laughed sarcastically. Yeah, right, Mother Teresa. We all know it's because you're poor. You've got nothing. I should have just let her comment slide and not make a big deal out of it. But oh no, she woke the giant in me. I couldn't keep my mouth shut, so I responded, Oh yeah? Just watch me. Anna responded, Oh, I will, homeless girl. I went home feeling defeated. What did I just get myself into? How will I prove her wrong? I literally got nothing. I tried convincing mom. I begged her to get me $200 to buy a fake designer jacket. She looked at me as if I was the craziest person in the world. $200 for a jacket? Are you insane? Do you know how many hours I worked to get that money? And before she finished her lecture about working hard and appreciating every penny I get, I went to my room slamming the door behind me. She didn't understand how hard it was to be a high school student. She knew nothing about the social judgment there. The next day, I pretended to be sick. I didn't want to go to school and face Anna or tolerate her nasty comments. Mom left me in bed. She was too tired to argue with me in the morning. Later, I went to get some breakfast, and just as I was about to open the fridge, I saw Dad's credit card on the kitchen counter. My eyes popped out and my heart started beating fast. I hesitated at first. Dad would kill me if I bought something with it, but I couldn't stop myself from thinking, couldn't it be a sign that I should use it? I mean, my dad never forgot his credit card before. The timing was strange and perfect at the same time. Maybe the universe knew the suffering I've been going through and decided to offer some help. I took the credit card and went online. I logged into a site for secondhand items, and after so much scrolling, I made up my mind to buy this $300 designer handbag. It looked unique with that owl picture sewn on its back with these shiny, colorful beads. I filled in the billing information and pressed confirm and oh my god, just like that, it was mine. The website assured me that the bag will be delivered in two days. I was ecstatic. Finally, I would be like most of the girls at my school. Anna wouldn't pick on me anymore. I put the credit card back in its place and went on with my day. But something strange happened. The next day while I was getting ready for school, I got a message on my phone saying, the bag you purchased is not for sale. Cancel your order right now. You'll get a refund. I looked at the number. It was so strange. It had way more digits than it should and too many zeros. It must be a joke. I googled the number and got nothing. Tons of people buy stuff online every day. Maybe it was not for me. If it were, they would have sent me an email, wouldn't they? So I just brushed it off my mind and I went to school with so much pride, looking into Anna's eyes like I was a beast now. Just you wait two more days and I'll make sure you wish you were dead. However, later that day, I got another message. It said, be ready to face the consequences. It's your choice. We'll come to your house and take the bag. My blood ran cold. Was it a real threat? 
If they know my house, who knows what they can do to me? Or my parents? I kept thinking while going hysterical in my room. I heard the doorbell and I freaked out. I went to answer it. I looked through the door's eyes and saw the delivery man. The bag has arrived. I opened the door, got the bag, and signed quickly while looking left and right to see if anyone was watching. Then I closed the door and went upstairs to check it. The bag looked like a normal bag. I opened it and looked inside, flipped it over, checked its pockets, but nothing came out. Why would they want it back? However, the messages wouldn't stop. Whoever was sending them kept threatening me that he'll do something to me, so I decided to disappear. Oh no, I didn't want to send the bag back. I just got it and I fell in love with it and it would take two days for them to get it. And I didn't want to tell my parents the truth. Dad didn't notice that his credit card was used. He wouldn't know about it until the next month. Why would I expose myself? He would ground me. I'm not ready for it. Plus, I'm already curious. I need to know why they need to take the bag. At midnight, I had already made up my mind to live a while with Mrs. Jenny's. I packed some of my things and left the house as quietly as possible. I made sure not to make any sound and I barged in Mrs. Jenny. I knew she kept the kitchen door open for her dog. And that was two days ago. I turned off my cell phone so no one could call me and kept watching the house. My parents freaked out and I saw the police arrive at our place to run an investigation, but I remained still. The first day went by while me checking the house. Nothing strange happened except for my parents not going to work, which pissed me off. I mean, I was hiding to observe and protect them, but now they're making it harder for me. The second day was boring as hell. I kept on watching. My parents were still looking for me, but the whole situation seemed calm. I was getting really hungry. Mrs. Jenny didn't really have the kind of food I would eat. So I put on my hoodie and cap and went to the convenience store to get some snacks. And that's when I saw the news report. I made myself a big bowl of ramen noodles and sat behind the window. I took out the phone in my pocket and turned it on. It's been two days since I opened it. The minute I unlocked it, I got tons of notifications. Missed calls, messages, and mentions all over my social media accounts. I had it on airplane mode and turned off the Wi-Fi. I checked Twitter first, and a new hashtag caught my eye. It was hashtag hope you are safe. I started scrolling through the tweets and saw that many of my classmates had pictures of me with captions like, Our heart goes out to you, Scarlet. Praying that you are alive and well. Whoa, I didn't know that I mattered that much to them. Tess had maybe 200 tweets asking people to help. I scrolled down some more until I got to Jonathan's tweet. Jonathan was my lab partner. We only talked in class and did our projects together and that was it. But to my surprise, he confessed his love in his tweet. He wrote, I didn't have the courage to say it before, but if you ever come back, I'll let you know. Was he kidding? Two days of me missing and now I have a secret admirer like some kind of Hollywood actress? Why was he hiding? I was overwhelmed and kind of happy with all the attention I felt, so I decided to stay away for a little longer. I mean, the person who threatened me hadn't shown up yet, and I secretly wanted to see where this was going. I stayed a week at Mrs. Jenny's house. I watched my house, but I got obsessed with checking social media. I wanted to read every post they had about me. Yet, surprisingly, it all started going down on day six. People started going back to their lives. They stopped posting, and it was like they forgot about me. Then one morning, I saw my mother coming back to the house. She looked tired and lost a ton of weight. She had dark circles around her eyes. My heart was broken to see her looking like this. Have I gone too far with the whole thing? I sat down on the couch. I was on the verge of tears. I wanted to cry my lungs out, and I couldn't stay still. I got my things and went home. I knocked on the door and waited patiently for my mom and dad to open it up. My mom opened it, and when she saw me, she almost fainted. She started hugging and kissing me. She was worried sick. I can't believe I had the heart to do that to her. Dad came after. He hugged me too and we all sat in the living room. They were eager to hear my story. I started talking and explained the whole bag and message thing. I showed them to my mom. My mom looked at my phone for a while. She was staring at the number. Then she turned to my dad and said, Oh, don't tell me it was you who sent them. Did you use your business number? The one your company has an app for? I was shocked. I looked at my dad. He was sweating and his face started turning red. Wait, did he really do it? Mom had a scary look, so dad had to confess. Oh, honey, she used my credit card to buy a $300 bag. I had to teach her a lesson. I didn't know she'd take it that serious and run out of the house. Mom was pissed. She started yelling at my dad while he tried to calm her down. And out of nowhere, I started laughing. I laughed so hard at this. It was all one big lie. Then they joined me. I couldn't remember the last time I saw my parents looking happy like this. Two weeks later, the buzz about me went down. Dad told the police that I came home safe and sound. The police made sure not to leak any other information since I was not 18 yet. But I learned my lesson. My parents wanted me to keep the bag, but I insisted on returning it back. I didn't want to get any fake attention. At school, Tess, my only friend, was thrilled to see me. 
Mom told me how she came to visit them every day while I was missing to ask about me. Anna stopped bugging me, and Jonathan turned out to be honest. He truly had feelings for me. He asked me on a date, and I said yes. 